Hello and welcome to the Essence of Knowledge meeting which is for the participants of the Essence of Knowledge program. We answer your questions, we clear your doubts, solve your problems. Rashmi is asking, how is the act of body controlled when there is only experiencer? Even the experiencer is not the doer and the concept of doer is not meaningful in this context of path of knowledge. We have seen that there is no doer at all. Not only experiencer, there is none. So whenever there are questions like uh, who is doing this, who is controlling that, what is controlling the whole nature, whole earth, whole world, the answer is straightforward. No one. This, this is the general answer for any doer questions. Now try to find out why there is no doer. You can use your own direct experience and contemplation to find out. You can start from experiencer and you can see that it is only receiver of experiences. There is nothing there to do anything. Then you can go to the experience and you will see that it is simply appearance. That means even if you imagine a doer, the doer will be an appearance. No real doer at all. And that means that anything can be doer. Whatever you imagine to be doing something will be the doer, which is completely meaningless. In this existence, there is nothing except experience, the experiencer. And in two sentences, it can be shown that there is nothing which does anything, which controls anything or which acts. In technical words, we say there is no agency. What is the meaning of agency? The one who decides to do something and then does it. There is nothing like this. Now you can go down one level, ignore the experiencer, ignore the nature of illusion also. Forget that it is illusion. In practical sense, we say that it is the truth, whatever you are seeing. So in this illusion, when you consider this as truth, try to find the doer. So you can start from the body also you will see that the body is not an agent. There is no agency in the body. It is a collection of cells and each cell is doing its own function. It is a collection of organs and each organ is doing its own function. You can try to see it by asking the body to do something or asking the body to do something else because if the body is the controller, it should be able to do anything it wants. So you can ask the lungs to not breathe and you will find they don't obey. You can ask the heart to not beat and you will find no, it goes on. You can see that when it falls sick, you can ask the body to not fall sick. It falls sick, it becomes ill, it becomes old. That means no control there. Then you can jump to the mind and you can use the same trick, same test. You can ask the mind to not desire something or you can ask the mind to not think something or not to have a particular kind of emotion and it won't do it. Everything happens automatically there like a machine. We can try these kind of experiments to find out if there is any control in any part of the experience at all. You can drop down to the level of world. You can ask the world to to do a specific thing because let us assume it is in control. Something is controlled there. So you can ask the sun not to rise today and that will never happen. You can ask the rain to come today but no, the rain happens whenever it happens. So obviously there is no agency in the world also. No agency in the body, no agency in the mind. Experiencer is not an agent of action. In traditional sense we call them actors, doers. So after examining each and everything in your experience, you will find that there is nothing which is doing. There is nobody who is controlling. There is an illusion of control sometimes. Suppose you can say that I can move my hand, I can type something in the keyboard or I can say something. Now remember this is an illusion. First the action happens, then this ego tendency says I did it. That is the illusion. First, the action will happen through the body, through the mind, through speech. These are the three ways to act. And then the ego tendency says that I have done it. You can also check it. 
For example, when you sneeze, suppose you get cold and you sneeze. It was not your intention. It was not planned. You never thought of doing it. But still you will say, sorry, I sneezed. Sorry, I'm coughing. This is the ego tendency, which is taking the responsibility of action after it has happened. Same way, the thoughts or emotions or desires, they arrive first. And then there is another thought that I thought this, I desire this, I am feeling like this. That is another thought, that is another feeling. So that produces the illusion of doer. And if there is no knowledge, if the person is ignorant, that person assumes that I am the doer where there is no I. Then the person assumes that somebody is doing the jobs of the world and the person assumes that uh, there is somebody in the other person also. The other person is also doer. I am the doer, so you must be the doer. And so the responsibility of action is fixed on something. So this is the lowermost layer of ignorance where the doer is real because you can see that all your social f and uh, uh, social actions and all the society is functioning on the concept of doer. Even your family is functioning on this concept. And yes, the individual or the person also assumes that the doer is real and lives his life because it is useful in survival. If we say that um, there is no doer and if somebody does a crime, then whom are you going to send to jail? If somebody does something good, whom are you going to praise? If I do the work for my boss, the boss can say you are not the doer, then I won't get payment. So these are the problems and that is why in this illusion, the doer is real. But in the truth, there is nothing like this. What is controlling the body? What is controlling the mind? There is apparent control. Whatever is necessary for survival, that happens. You can call it control. Like when the sun shines and the ocean becomes warm and the water evaporates, then it becomes clouds and then it rains. What do we say? The weather is controlled by the sun. Sun is controlling everything here. But the sun is simply a ball of matter. It is only happening. The language makes it as if the weather is being controlled by the sun. Same way you can say the manager is controlling the company. The language is like this, that it gives the responsibility of all the actions to one person. But it is just happening. If you look very closely, things are simply happening. Sometimes your computer is controlling some things. And we say that, okay, the software is controlling this thing. But the software never decides, never thinks. It is simply happening. It is set up in such a way that it gets controlled. Controlled means it happens in a way which is useful. So the body is going on and the mind is going on. The whole world is happening in a specific way. It produces the illusion of control. Everything is balanced. Everything is controlled. And th this is very useful. We do say that, okay, you got the knowledge. Now do the purification. Control your mind. But who is there to control the mind? Nobody. It simply changes in response to purification. Then we say, okay, I control my mind. Now it changes for better or it, or it stops doing that faulty functions. We call them impurities. If something is faulty in the mind or the body, we say there is an impurity. And we purify it, we clean it. And now it works as we desire. So we say, I controlled it. There is nobody. The mind itself is saying that I control myself. Sometimes we say self-control, which is the right word. There is not one thing which is controlling the other thing. It is happening like this. And when it happens according to our wish, we say that everything is in control. But uh, that is the ideal case. In this illusion, everything happens as it is. And most of it is not controlled. It is simply happening. It is not happening according to the wish of the person. That is the cause of suffering. Assuming that I am the doer is, is the cause of suffering. Letting go of the doer is blissful. And assuming the doer is practical, intelligent. It is very practical to assume that there is a doer. Continue with your life, but do not think that it is the truth. This illusion is working like this. 
that's all can be said sometimes it is possible to predict what will happen next that also gives you an illusion of control that things are in control somebody is controlling it why it is possible to predict events because of the laws this part of the illusion where we live where the human beings are found has some laws without laws nothing will function so the laws give us an illusion of control but as you, as you go to the higher layers the laws will also change we call them the laws of the mind and sometimes in the occult field or science field we say that the laws control everything so when you ask who controls the body who controls these actions of the body in the world other people short answer will be from the point of view of science laws control laws decide what will happen which is true in this small area of the illusion nothing happens without laws so usually i give this example of computer errors if the computer is working on something and it produces a wrong result it is running a program and produces a wrong result in ordinary language we say the computer made a mistake so we project the doer on this machine and we say that it did not run according to my wish it did not produce that result it was a mistake of the computer this is an ordinary language but what has happened is it has done exactly that for which it was programmed it ran according to the law we say like this and in in from the point of view of path of knowledge we say it happened like this so you can see that the lowest layer there is complete ignorance everything is doer for an ordinary person even the computer is a doer and from the point of view of science or occult laws are responsible for everything from the ultimate point of view these are all concepts even the laws are not real they are simply an outcome of self organization those who are in uh, version 2 of the program they already know what is self organization how the laws originate from the activity of vibrations those who are in version 3 if they want to know about the science and the occult there is another program so it is also useful to form this concept of laws of the mind or laws of the universe and there you can find who is controlling what that is satisfactory for intellectual people but for spiritual people no these are all illusions these all concepts are false suraj is asking when i am seeing the red then i becomes the red how it is a very good question usually we say that whatever i am seeing i am not that if i can see it i am not that this is the basic elimination method to find out what i am but here i am declaring something which is totally opposite so obviously this question will come what is seen is ultimately me this answer is right in the on the level of non duality on the level of oneness whatever is seen is nothing but me however it is not essence it is not my essential part everybody should add this last sentence to the elimination method yes whatever i am saying is not me here the meaning of me is essence yes it is not me essentially but once you know that i am everything i am the whole existence that means everything is me but that which is seen is non essential the false nature true nature is the witness the experiencer is the true nature false nature experience still both are one still it is me in short we say that at the level of non duality everything is me so obviously red green blue whatever comes up in your experience will be me now how can i become the red this is another question this is poetic it comes from uh, the law of the mind which says that the seeing and creating are one action in sanskrit we call it drishti srishti it is one of the law of the mind probably it is not there right now in your program i think it is it was removed from there and it was placed in tantra bodhi because it relates to the mind not to is not so much to advait or path of knowledge so that which is experienced is being created at the same time it's created from what not something else not something which is apart from me so how to express this in language 
I become that experience. This is the poetic meaning. In short, we say I become red when I experience red. And this discussion happens in the context of irreducibles, which is called tanmatra in Sanskrit. So all these English words are invented, you see, just to explain <laughs> the Sanskrit philosophy. Uh, irreducible means the experience which cannot be reduced further into anything else. So when you are looking at red, can you reduce the red into something else? And the answer is no. It is not anything else. Red is red. It is not made up of anything else. That experience is the final. So what is that red then? It is me. Why red bit? Then again, poetic answer. I decide to become red. I choose that one possibility out of infinite possibilities. That such and such experience will be called the experience of red. Now, remember that this is all happening in a very, very metaphorical way. It's not very accurate language. Nobody becomes red. Red is not there. It is an illusion. I am not actually red. Then what I am? Nothing actually. There is no description. I am what I am. Silence is my description. So when you go one step down in the experience, you see irreducibles. The experience is made up of irreducibles. How? If you see the red cup, let us say you have a coffee mug which is red in color. You can say I am experiencing a coffee mug. But that is the name of the object. It is not experience. What is the experience of? A shape and a color. Shapes and colors are irreducibles. Tanmatra. That is the experience. It is not an experience of a coffee mug. That is the knowledge on top of this irreducible experience. That knowledge is nothing but a fault in the mind. That knowledge that I am looking at a cup is impurity. That is why, you see, we remove that knowledge. We call it ignorance only. Suppose you strike the cup with a spoon. It makes a sound. Now something has added into the experience. And you say it's definitely a cup, very solid object. But what is the actual experience? The red color, the shape and a sound. That sound is also irreducible. It is a tone of some kind. If me and that experience are one, that means I am looking at myself in as that irreducible, these three irreducibles. In other words, I am becoming these three irreducibles to form that object. Sometimes people will say that I form that object. Like in Tantra, I am creating everything simply by looking at things. That is a deeper subject. You know, you can create anything you want. That is the basis of Tantra. <laughs> Whatever you want can happen. Whatever you want, that experience can appear. Right now, we are not capable of it because we lack knowledge. But it, it, this is how it is actually happening right now. This much knowledge can be had. Then you can hack into the Maya and you can produce whatever experience you want. All the Tantra is simply an art of creating the irreducible. Where does it happen? In the world? No. In the body? No. In the mind? No. In me. Look at your experience. It is all me appearing as something. Whatever is appearing are not objects, bodies, minds, emotion, thoughts. No. Whatever is appearing is irreducible. And because it is me, it cannot be reduced. That is the secret. Why it is irreducible. Why there cannot, why it cannot be broken into something else. Because it is me. It's one. So the, apparently I become that irreducible so that I can experience myself. This is my choice. And here you can see that we are not in the non-dual philosophy anymore. This is not really Advait philosophy. Which philosophy it is? Sankhya. So yes, people can say you have mixed the philosophies. Yes. First, we elaborate from the po point of view of non-dualism. And if there is something special which cannot be described from uh, the point of view of non-dualism or Advait, we take help of something else. Here, we take help of Sankhya. Your chapter number 21 to 30 in the version 2 of the program is nothing but Sankhya philosophy. Because Advait does not bother about these things. The Advait says, look, whatever is appearing, can, cannot explain. It is you. Final. That is the truth. Non-dual truth. There it stops. But because this is path of knowledge, the questions keep coming. Now I am experiencing red. How is it me? And this is the answer you see. In the process we discover the law of the mind also. Very important law on which the whole tantra is based. See how important this small insight is. So because we 
go into other philosophies the language becomes different you can say it becomes not so accurate so we are not bothered about uh, accuracy here if it satisfies the intellect it is fine so from the that point of view i am the only one and then i become something i take a limited form in the form of irreducibles to appear to myself there is explanation going on there which is not done in advait because obviously it will be wrong explanation whatever you want to say about the brahman will always be wrong so then it goes further that uh, the tanmatra and the irreducible it is dependent on the sense senses indri so the red is dependent on the sense of sight which is obvious isn't it what is what are eyes grasping vibration so the vibration is not red it is an explanation of what the senses are grasping now the science starts here this is the foundation of all science ancient modern whatever and then your whole you know program goes into vibrations and in tantra bodhi we explain how to convert that vibration into desired experience that is the foundation of occult you cannot simply think and produce an experience isn't it there is a process to transform the vibration which is nothing but me it is my own explanation my own description how to transform that vibration that is this occult part science part because nothing is else is getting transformed it is me who is changing so the tantric is not changing anything outside the tantric is changing himself to produce that experience that means i appear to myself as something else obviously it has advantages isn't it desire fulfillment whatever you want you can you can witness that kind of experience you can have suraj is saying it is mentioned in the program that existence has stored all the stages of the sapling as it was growing and it has done that for everything how can we come to this conclusion uh, please shed some light on it can we get direct experience of this also yes because the existence is timeless that means the sapling never grows what is the meaning of timelessness events are not happening in time experience is not proceeding in time there is an appearance that's all it appears like this so nothing is actually changing there there are possibilities so all the possibilities of that sapling of all its stages are already there right now right here and how can you get the direct you are ha- having direct experience of that right now are you having an experience of things growing and changing in time or is time constructed out of this kind of illusion you should um, contemplate on this once you know the unreality of time then the whole experience is right now right here so every plant that is planted every child that is born everything that is constructed it is all its stages are already here and you are having the direct experience of that it appears that it is not there it has changed when you compare the memories it appears that it is not the same sapling that is not same plant it is not the same tree remember what is appearing right now is also illusion there is no truth in that that this sapling has grown there is no truth in that it was always a possibility whatever is appearing right now is also a possibility probably you are saying that i want a simultaneous view of all the saplings all the stages of that plant becoming tree i want the whole experience right now remember there is no right now there was no past there was no future there is no future also that means there is no present also so i want that whole experience that happened in all of the time right now is a wrong notion the sentence is completely wrong now can it happen yes in illusion every possibility is there so you can get that kind of experience also but it will be totally false some kind of strange experience it is possible in altered states like projection projection projected state and the explanation for that is whatever is appearing is a memory that is also told in the program version 2 everything is simply patterns in the memory and the memory is timeless non physical non material non mental so any possibility can be manifested if you have the capability obviously as humans we don't have that kind of capability we are very limited but it is possible and how will it look like a memory 
it will look like a memory that I can remember all the stages of that plant now, right now. And it is already destroyed, it's already gone. Everybody who is born is already dead and reborn. So it is a human limitation only. There is no limitation in the existence. There is no limitation in the memory. Because the human mind cannot comprehend all these things, there is a problem. So sometimes because of ignorance, we have some kind of wrong expectation. Like there is a good example that people say that uh, self-realization means that the self will become real for me. That means I am seeing it in front of me. Can you show me why is there an expectation to have an experience of the self? Because there is really no knowledge of what I am here in this case. This is called a false expectation which comes out of ignorance. So if there is an expectation that whatever is happening I must be able to see all the stages of it. It is really a false expectation that is arising out of this ignorance that it is not happening in time. This ignorance, the assumption that probably things are changing in time, there is a snapshot of everything stored somewhere. I must get it. I must get all those snapshots in front of me right now so that I know that all possibilities exist. <laughs> but that is wrong notion is wrong expectation. You can make it appear like that. That will be total illusion again. Like I said, everything is possible. And that is not knowledge. The knowledge is nothing changes, simply appears as change. There is no time. All that is, is right now, right here. That is the direct experience. The plant became the tree. Ignorance only. Now see how much peace is there. Because there is no question now. No question can be asked now. No, 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 but the plant became the tree. Show me. Probably you will point to the tree. Look, this tree, I remember it was a plant. Where are the intermediate stages? Where are they stored? Remember, this whole talk is a waste of time because there is no time. Whatever the person is pointing at is actually not there. It is appearing. This is because this mind is bound in laws, so it is appearing like this. To assume that things are changing, they are changing in time. There are snapshots of every stage of change. It is totally wrong notion. So hopefully I am clear because I know it is kind of difficult to understand these things. But the key here is to understand the non-existence of time. Even if you get an experience of all the stages of uh, any phenomena, it will be false experience. It won't explain anything. Now there is another difficulty that the time can be divided infinitely. Suppose you want to see the stages of the growing tree every day. So there will be snapshots in the memory, universal memory of it every day. But let us say you are not satisfied by that. You say, I want snapshots of it every hour also. What happened in between? So yes, it can produce that snapshot also every hour. But you say, no, no, no. What happened between 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock? How it changed? I want to know that. Yes, it will produce that also. Then every second then every millisecond. Now, how many snapshots are there? Anybody will say infinite, which means it has become meaningless, which means it is not correct now. So the existence is storing everything as a possibility. Then as soon as it is demanded, the experience is demanded, the possibility is become actualized. This is the meaning of the statement. You can have a direct experience of it. We are having the direct experience of this only right now. The thing is, the human being cannot control that experience. Why? Because the humans are an experience themselves. Whatever this mind is thinking, it's simply an experience. How can one experience control some other experience? There is nobody to control anything here. Why do I say demanded? That is simply language. There is no better explanation than this. As far as I know, probably somebody has a better explanation. So, everything is stored as possibility. It is called latent impression, karan, karma, sanskar. There are many names in Sanskrit. In English, we don't have any names. So we say non-physical, non-mental memory. Everything is stored there. Since it is non-physical, non-mental, that means it is simply possibility, latent. And in the right circumstances, something appears out of it. Right now, if you are looking at the tree, grown tree, that is appearing out of it. There is no time. There is no place. There is no tree. So obviously, those who don't understand this, those who don't know this, they will imagine something that's probably something is stored about this tree somewhere. 
So try to understand that the explanation is supposed to destroy the notions, not to produce new notions. Hopefully it is clear. If not, you, you can think about it and ask me again. So here we'll conclude today's meeting. Thank you everybody for attending today's meeting. Jagdish ko badhai. Aage badhte rahi mark par. Hum milenge agli bar. Hum agli bar milenge. I'll see you next time. Namaste.